Yeah, you know there's that cliche people say where it's like, well, is it something you want or something you need? Do you want it or do you need it? You know, there's that sort of attitude, and it's kind of this annoying cliche that you hear, like, the sort of adults, the sort of parents who are like, I just tell it like it is. Do you want it or do you need it? You know, and there's truth to it. I mean, it's a very, you know, it's a good question to ask. Do you want it or you do you need it? But they typically, like, say it to little kids who are like, I need it. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, God. Um but uh, I've been thinking a lot about want versus need in relationships, friendships in particular, because what I've found is that when you don't do what someone wants, they tend to be more upset with you than if you don't do what they need. And I'm trying to figure out why. And I think a reason for that is because when someone needs you, when someone absolutely needs you, they're already feeling powerless because they need something that they can't do themselves. So they're, they're already coming from a place of powerlessness. And if you can't help them with that, they're already powerless and they're not, they're not trying to control you. Uh, they just literally, whether they actually need you or not, in their mind they are powerless and you, you have some sort of power that can help them with their situation or whatever it is. And with want, there is this strong need to control. They have this strong desired outcome, and it's very emotional. Want is based on emotion. You want something. Uh, so when someone doesn't do what you want, you in turn have this more emotional reaction. And that's not to say that needing something isn't emotional. There's a lot of emotions involved with need. But it's different than wanting. Wanting brings out these controlling emotions. And one reason it's been on my mind is because not doing what someone wants has caused a lot of tension in certain friendships in my life over the years. And in fact, I've even had long-term, solid, good friendships dissolve largely because of not doing what someone wants. And I'm not saying it's all on them. You know, it's all on them just ho holding a grudge, holding an issue against me for not doing what they want. I, of course, I believe in two-way streets. Uh, One-way streets are fucking confusing, uh, and uh, I'm not sure why they exist. The, it's the flow. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, I've seen actual long-term friendships dissolve largely because of not doing what someone wants. And I had one that actually completely... Someone completely cut ties with me last year uh, because someone who'd been in my life for a very long time, very long time, because of not doing what they want. And they made up kind of a bullshit excuse, a, a total lie, in fact, for why they were angry with me. But I could tell the way things had been building for a while was because they wanted something out of me. Uh, and, like, I won't name names, I won't get specific, but they wanted me to do something uh, to be basically collaborate and, and do some things with them. And because I didn't do it, uh, they really took that personally and couldn't just admit that. Um, and uh, maybe there's more to it. Maybe I'm just blinded. I don't know. But I really feel like it was a case of doing, not doing what someone wants. Whereas I've done a lot of things for people like that, that, that person in particular. I've done a lot of things that that person needed. And I don't think that they, people necessarily take it for granted when you do what they need. I think they do really appreciate it. But I don't think they have that same visceral emotional reaction uh, when you can't meet their needs. Because if you can't meet their needs, there's usually either you're an asshole, you have something else going on, or you just don't have the power or capacity to help that need. Uh, so I think people generally understand it more. And like I said earlier, they're coming from a more powerless place. So in that powerlessness, there's less ego, there's less need to control. Whereas in the want, in the want, there's uh, all of that. Wanting is filled with those things. And it's kind of funny, too, how people refer to people as needy. And I just saying that, you know, just brings to mind all kinds of images of a needy person. And it's really one of the most unattractive qualities in people, in my opinion, neediness. And when needy people find each other, I can't even imagine it's attractive. It's probably initially attractive to them, like, oh, wow, it's someone. But I think they, they probably just drive each other crazy. But that sort of neediness uh, is just one of the most unattractive qualities. Because on one hand, it's this very, like, subservient, like, someone's just, like, laying their ego down. Sorry, I'm about to cough. Coughing out my ego. My ego. 
Um, but uh, when someone like is being needy, there's this weird thing where they're almost sacrificing their ego because it's like really like when you when someone behaves in a needy way, it's like either their self awareness is out the window, or they just don't care. And so therefore, there's like this because I mean you think about the opposite, which is when someone like is trying to play it cool. And there's so much ego to that. They're really when someone is trying to play it cool. Well, it doesn't have to be romantic, but it can just be with a friendship. If someone's just trying to play it cool and they're intentionally playing a little game or hard to get or that kind of thing, it's because it's you know it's all about you know holding on to their ego. But when someone's just openly and blatantly needy, it's like their egos. They're just flattening their ego. Um, but the weird thing about neediness, the funny thing about neediness is the word needy is really inaccurate. The behavior is wanty. When someone's being needy, they're being wanty because they're not asking for something they need at all. They're asking for something they simply want or in most cases think they want. Uh, and they're not going to get it. I know I've talked about that before. Like the more anxious energy you throw out, the least likely you are to get whatever it is you desire. And it's something I struggle with as an, as a, as, a, as an anxious person, you know, and I'm sick of that. I'm sick of like anxiety. You know, I don't deal with depression much at all, but I, I do deal with anxiety and I deal with it. Um, and I think there's a lot of self-defeating attitudes that go along with anxiety and maybe th the people who are actually clinically depressed along with anxious, maybe that's why it's more difficult for them. I totally understand that. But, uh, you know, when you do throw out that anxious energy, you're less likely to, likely to get what you want. And it is what you want, not what you need that you're after in those cases. Uh, but yeah, a more accurate term for neediness and needy people would be wanty. I can't think of any time that someone behaved in a needy way, whether it was toward me or whether I witnessed them doing it, where it was they were actually desiring something they needed. They were desiring something they wanted. And I feel now like I'm going back to the, the start of this show where I was like quoting the, you know, well, do you want it or do you need it? You know, kind of attitude. But really, that's accurate. You know, that's a good question to ask. Um, but to get back to friendships and the way that, you know, friendships can be damaged by not doing what people want. Um, it's something I regular, regularly struggle with because I'd like to consider myself a friend who is almost always there when someone needs me in a very practical way or, you know, as an ear, you know, and uh, God forbid someone ask my advice. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I try to be there when I feel like someone needs me. And uh, but I'm not very good at doing what people want. And it's not because I'm a rebel. It's not because I because I think if you. If you consciously just repeatedly don't do what a friend or someone in your life who's important, if you consciously and, and just repeatedly don't do what they want, even though you could in a lot of cases, then you're either an asshole or not really their friend or something else. Either way, that, that means you're in the wrong. If you just repeatedly, because I mean, for, that's part of friendship. That's part of being a family member. That's part of just the, the way things work is you have to do things that people want. You can't just do what people need. It's not a job. Um, and I'll get into jobs too in a sec, but, uh, you know, being a friend and being a family member, it's, it's, there's a job element to it. It's a role, I guess, is what I would say. But it's not a job job. You know, you're not just there to meet a need. Um, so if you just consciously and repeatedly don't do what someone wants, either just to be a brat or for whatever reason, uh, or if you can't, I guess, even if you can't, eventually it's like, well, then what's even the purpose of the friendship if you just can never do it and honestly can't? Um, so I do think it's important to do what people want sometimes, but you have to do it in a way that's comfortable for you and you have to do it in a way that's, uh, you know, relevant to you. Because if you have to lay yourself down, especially often, like every once in a while, you know, it's important to humble yourself and things like that. Um, but if someone wants you to do something and it's just honest to God, not the right thing for you to do. Uh, either at the time or ever, you shouldn't have to do that. But there is, you know, a point in time where it's like if someone wants to go see a movie with you and they keep asking you and you do value their friendship, you should go see the damn movie with them. But if they want more than that, if they want you to like help them with something like a project or to collaborate with them and it's just not the right fit, uh, the the problem is really with them. 
you know, I think about, I've had to turn down a lot of projects and, you know, there's some projects that I think would have been really good, uh, and could potentially happen. Um, I think I mentioned before possibly doing a podcast with my friend, uh, she, she wanted to do one. And I think that's a great idea. I do want to do that. That's on me. Actually, I do want to do that idea. However, there are some other things like some musical collaborations and like some requests for artwork that I've had, which like I'm honored by, but at the same time, it just wouldn't be a good fit. And so I've had to turn them down and people, I know that people, are unhappy with that and i know that it's caused strain on those friendships but it's just a reality and uh things fit together naturally how they should but no, i would love to do something like this is ideal for me and i would eventually i know i've been saying this since 2013 since i started doing um podcasts and now these these <laughs> uh but i really would love to collaborate with people and i feel like anybody who you have natural chemistry with and can talk to uh you can do that with but i don't feel the same way about music and other art and video and things like that like more ab i don't know what to call it like but that more like create creative -y creativity creative -y creativity it's a horrible made up word uh, i don't know uh but uh you know, I feel like it's harder to collaborate with people. It's harder to work with people in that capacity because it it involves such an element of like fantasy and timing and just I wouldn't even want to get into it here. But it, it's hard, you know, it's like when someone wants to jam with you, like this jam, hey man, you know, that kind of thing. Like it's it's an honor that someone wants to do something with you. But there's just sometimes you just know it's not the right thing to do. Uh, and it hurts feelings. That's the thing that sucks. Um, cause even if you do jam with them, then you're not in, in on it. And I'm not saying I'm some great musician, but it's like, you know, someone who's been involved in music and stuff like that, you do, that does come up. Uh, and, but if, and if your heart's not in it, why would you even want to jam in the first place? And then if you do jam and then they think that it's like going on a second date with someone or something where you go on that first date and you're like, uh, well, I did this, you know, I, I went through the motions and then they want to go on a second date. And eventually you're going to have to hurt their feelings. You know, eventually you're going to have to say, I don't want to go on that date. And then, you know, sometimes you just let things build so long that an even worse blow up can happen. Cause like, you know, you can lead people on, not just romantically, but you can lead people on in so many different ways as a human being. Um, so ultimately, I don't know, I, it, the want and need thing is something I struggle with. And, uh, you know, what started that tangent was uh, just talking about, um, <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, it was talking about well, wantiness. I think we should start saying wantiness, even though it doesn't sound as good because the word needy sounds so good. Like when you think about a needy person, like something, it's like a needly word. It's a, it sounds like needle. Uh, so it's like this needy. And you just think about like, when I think of a needy person, I think of them just like they tuck their hands in and when they're being needy and they're just like, they're trying to grip something with like the tips of their fingers while like pulling inward. It's like this very, it, that's what I envision. And that's kind of like psychically what it feels like when someone's needy, uh, they're needy. <laughs> I'm going to stop doing that. Uh, but, uh, that's what it feels like. And like wanty though is a more accurate way of describing it. It's just that when I think of wanty, I think of someone like reaching out and just like pulling in. I don't know why these hand visuals are so important. Um, um, but I, I did mention job. Oh no, I remember what started that tangent. It was, uh, talking about how if you repeatedly don't do what someone wants and you value them in your life, eventually that's going to fuck things up or you're just a, an asshole and, uh, who knows why you even want to be involved in that friendship or whatever it is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, eventually you, you should do things people want and they should do things you want. That's the trade-off. You know, there's some there's times when you you have to do what people want if you value them. Uh, and I was thinking about jobs too, though, because I earlier I had said how, you know, jobs tend to be based around needs. And in theory, that's true. But, you know, we're human beings. We're not robots. We're not AI. Uh, we are... Uh, we're artificial, but, but we're not AI. But no, at jobs, you know, in theory, it's all you have a job description. And if you do that, uh, it's all good. But in my experience, and you know, it might just be my experience, but 
when you do what you know the company needs or you do what a business needs they'll appreciate it not always but they they'll appreciate it you know they'll appreciate that you do your job and all that but it's not there's no emotion involved and there is a level of like taking it for granted and as there should be i think a company should kind of take for granted when people do what they need or meet their job description because it's like yeah that's what we're paying you for that's what you're you want it or you need it that's what you're paying that's what we're paying you for that's what we're paying you for i if you want me to thank you you can do it for free. Uh, something to be, there's something to be said for that, but not really. It's good to show appreciation. But uh, what I have found in jobs is when you don't do what someone wants at a job, when someone, not that someone's asking you necessarily to do something that's like way out of, out, outside of your job description. That's not in my job description. Uh, but when someone asks you to do something at work that they want you to do, and it's not necessarily essential to the business or to them or anything, and you can't do it or don't do it, if they're cool, they're just like, oh, yeah, whatever. You know, thanks, man. Uh, but thanks for trying. Thanks for trying. Uh, but a lot of times, if they're not a totally stable person or if there are issues there, they will be extremely emotional and upset about not doing what they want, even if it's outside of your job description, even if it's kind of abstract, even if it's just something completely unnecessary. And I'd love to go into some examples of this, but, you know, I don't. I don't feel badly about anything from my uh, past. That's not true. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. It's all water under the bridge. But just I have had that experience where I haven't done been able to do something that someone wants at a job and their reaction is very severe. Whereas when I can't do something they need, they either understand or, you know, it's just there's a much different reaction uh, to that whole situation. So it's not just personal. It's also, it translates to professional situations too. Uh, being wanty. I don't have too much more to say about this. It's something that I, I've just been trying to wrap my brain around because it's caused a lot of struggle in my life. And I think that I do tend to do less of what people want than the average person. And part of that's just how I am, how my brain is programmed uh, and I try to reprogram my brain regularly, and that's one of those things where if you're trying to continually reprogram your brain in a healthy way, in a more balanced way, in a way that's more, like, harmonious with other people, you know, which is extremely difficult, uh, <laughs> I just, just hit a total dead end. My art my artificial, artil, my artificial intelligence just ran out, um, but, uh, if, I don't know. It's just, it's something I struggle with and I, and I do recognize my own shortcomings with meeting people's wants, but I also don't feel terribly guilty about it. Oh yeah. What, what I was saying is if, if you've reprogrammed your brain or you've like reprioritized like the things in your life in a way that you think makes sense, then it's going to make your life more harmonious. Cause that's the first step is making your life more harmonious. And then in turn, making the people in your life being greater harmony with the people in your life. Um, if you've done all that or, or, or at least like, see, I'm just. See, I'm stuttering. I'm glitching out. If you're doing all that and you're, uh, you know, doing a better job at being a person and you still can't meet people's wants, I think that's a sign that you're just a little bit different and you can't necessarily do that as much. Maybe you're introverted. Maybe you're just, you just are, it's a, it's hard to hold on to your energy. And so you just have to hold on to it and you have a limited amount of time, whatever it is. I feel like this is turning into like an anxious monologue. Um, but you know, you have your reasons and it's good to have your reasons, but you should, you know, evaluate that, evaluate what you can do, uh, and what you can't do, evaluate whether someone's asking you for something they want or asking you for something they need. And if that means asking them whether they want it or need it, you know, do that at your own peril. I would hate to ask anybody in my life that question. It would just, it would sound terrible. Maybe if I have a kid someday, I'll ask them that every single day. Um, I'll just repeatedly ask it. I'll be that witty parent. You want it or you need it. Uh, but I think you should ask yourself that. You shouldn't ask someone else that. Maybe if you're raising a child and trying to form their mind, uh, you should ask them that. But if you're an adult and you're dealing with other adults and they have demands or they have requests or whatever it is, you should be asking yourself whether they want or need it from you.